Before I start my story, I just want to ask you guys one question. Do you guys find it worse to go to a DMV or going to the post office? Don't think of it in terms of how expensive it is or about how draining something is, but more so of your overall satisfaction, the meaning of what you're doing. For me, I've felt lately that going to the post office is a little worse than going to the DMV. But today I have two stories, one that doesn't have anything to do with me and the other one that does have to do with me. And I'm gonna share them in order. So I was standing on the line at the post office and in front of me there was one guy and in front of him was the lady who would be assisted next by the next available clerk. Prior to all of us, there was this one guy who had a huge box. Inside that box, we found out what the contents were because he had it on the floor and when he tried lifting it, the contents just spilled somehow. It was a bunch of like body care stuff. And it was funny because the guy in front of me and the lady in front of that guy helped him to collect his stuff. And the only reason I didn't move is because, come on, there's already three people involved and I'm not going to like crowd the place any further. My presence was not necessary. It got picked up in about five seconds. So anyway, during that interim, another clerk becomes available. There were three clerks, one that was expecting that guy and then the other one that was supposed to be taking that lady that was in front of all of us. Well, in the midst of that lady helping this guy pick up his stuff from the floor, some lady on the back of the line, toward the back of the line, goes, uh, ma'am, he's waiting for you, talking about the clerk waiting for the lady. The clerk wasn't saying anything at all. He could perfectly see what was happening. He didn't make a scene. He didn't tell anybody to hurry. I get it. The line is long. It's post Labor Day, a holiday. I hated that shit. I just wanted to holler back at that lady and be like, it will take whatever time it will take and you will wait it out or just leave. I'm nobody. I don't have a place to say that at all. But it was particularly annoying. But I'm proud of how the lady clapped back. She was like, I'm only trying to help. I'm coming. Give me one second. I thought, well said, because some of these people need to be told things. And I'm glad that it was from customer to customer and not from worker to customer. Now, let's transition to the lead up to my story, which is one of the clerks who we had there is a lady I had never seen before in my life. I don't know if she's new to post office hearing or if she's new to being at the front, but I promise you that I go to that place often enough and I've been going to that place for 10 years now to have an idea of who's there and who isn't and who's a long-term employee and who isn't. So anyway, this lady, she had a major attitude problem for starters. And even when she greets you, it's the kind of greeting that's not very polite. Anyway, in the middle of her helping the guy who was in front of me, she proceeds to eat something. It smelled like candy from where I was standing. I'm thinking, okay, that's rude. And she's talking to the guy while she has that thing on her mouth. Now, I'm not going to judge her too harshly on that because I know people who do genuinely have to nibble on something because they may become dizzy or they're going through some condition where their sugar levels plummet or something and they just need to have something sweet to bring their glucose levels back up, something like that. I have personally experienced that when I was an older teenager. I discovered that I just could not get by without any breakfast and when I started working, it was game over for me, absolutely. And I had to learn the hard way that as an older adult, I just cannot get away with not eating at all before becoming physical. I get it. That's not the problem. The problem is that she was talking to the guy and the guy was genuinely not understanding her. I wasn't understanding her and I'm not the one being helped. And she got annoyed at him 
that he kept asking her to repeat herself because you are not being clear so when she did that i said to myself oh my god i hope she's not the one to help me because this is gonna suck well it did she ended up helping me and when i went up to her i show her my phone like this it was upside down and the reason i did that is because i have discovered that showing my phone at that angle doesn't make a difference like you can show the qr code in any angle even diamond shape and it's going to work like the way that picture is coded is not sensitive to the angle of the scanner and i just said oh just go ahead and try it very calmly very gently very politely like what you just heard and she was like you need to turn your phone over the right way and i'm like right go ahead and try it and she was just holding her scan gun she was refusing to even try and then she goes with a really strong attitude ridden tone would you turn your phone the right way and then i did and she tried scanning it and of course it didn't work because i knew it wasn't gonna work it's not like i have been doing that for like two years now i ended up looking at my phone screen again and since she was taking so long i have my phone set to where the backlight dims because sometimes i have forgotten it unlocked and next thing i know my battery is drained so anyway so i tap on it and i show it to her upside down and she tries scanning it and it worked but before that she was like when she tried scanning it right side up the phone facing the right side before the backlight went out she tried scanning it for like two seconds and she said it doesn't even work and then that's when i looked at my phone the backlight was dimming i tapped on it and then i showed it to her upside down and what happened it fucking worked of course after that she didn't say anything to me except circle the qr code saying survey tracking number was there anything else that you needed and i said no thank you i kept my usual tone and demeanor i was super calm even though my chest was tightening when she talked to me with that nasty ass attitude and you guys know me i can't handle when a woman is disrespectful to me because i'm a lady myself and to me the most important thing is to maintain my composure and i guess you could say that's the only form of protocol i follow no matter who's abusing me in public i remain chill i remain calm and only at the back of the house may i have a meltdown and it depends on who you are if you're someone i trust if you're someone i'm close to i may feel a degree more comfortable at showing you the real me and my real emotions because i know that you are well equipped to either deal with me or calm me down or if i have a coaching moment pending you will supply it for my growth and you have my growth and interest in mind so like i don't mind but someone who's a random person i'm not going to take your education into my own hands because that's not my job even though she treated me like shit and i wanted to tell her you need to work on your gross attitude i'm not going to do that because i know where my power lies and instead i decided to fill out the survey and tell the truth i'm like okay since you're encouraging me to do the survey i'll go ahead and fill it out and what was funny is that i tried and i tried to look for her name and she conveniently did not have a name tag so like you know that you're a little pearl out there you know that you're a little gem and that you gotta be as anonymous as possible and i don't know what happened with her name tag but she had a hole near her shirt where her name tag would have been it wasn't that the shirt had like a big hole or anything but it looked ripped it it looked like something was there and that's usually where they put their name tags anyway and some folks wear their name tag on a lanyard she had none of that and again it's someone i haven't seen and unfortunately on the receipts their names don't print that i can recall but yeah what was supposed to be a normal routine harmless visit to a post office turned into a mildly crappy one and on the note of post offices i remember this other lady at another location i did the same thing too i showed it 
upside down and she was like uh, you have it the wrong way and I was like would you please try it and then she reluctantly tried it and it worked as opposed to saying oh I didn't know that thank you for teaching me something or that's cool I was today years old when I found out I could do that you can handle that situation any number of ways especially since evidently I'm showing you something and you're learning something but no you have to have this attitude and not even try what the customer is telling you which clearly the customer in that regard may know something that you just don't and when people do that to me at work, I never tell them to flip it over or make it brighter or whatever. Like I'm familiar enough with my scan gun and how it will react that I don't need to do that. And even when customers do show me their phones upside down, I still tried scanning it because I was curious. And that's how I found out that it doesn't matter what angle you have it, it will work. But your arrogance and your pride is most important and ultimately my phone specifically will not work any other way except at the angle that i'm already presenting it to you all you have to do is try but for some reason we live in this culture where we need to prove people wrong all the time and if you're the worker it's like your pride gets in the way and i get it because i have been in that situation when i want to really get on a little bit of an argument with the customer and explain things but at some point all i do is i stay quiet and i'm like i will be the one to know better in this situation because i know something that they don't but when it comes to my handling of my own personal phone if i'm doing something that i'm used to doing you just have to trust me and give it a shot but if you're doing something that you're not used to doing and you don't have the experience shut the fuck up and try things don't try to fight with the customer. Customers be teaching me things almost every week that I didn't know about how to navigate their own phones sometimes. And I'm like, you know what? I'm glad that this happened. I'm glad that I saw you doing what you're doing and that my little bit of knowledge was able to help you because now my little bit of knowledge now turned into a little bit more knowledge. That makes me so freaking proud. But some people just get fucking offended and the most annoying part about the post office is that I'm very aware that it's a federal building and I'm thinking, what's going to happen here? Could she try to claim that I'm being a rowdy customer even though I was quiet? I was just showing her my phone and I just said, go ahead and try it. Just go ahead and try it. So if anything, the one who got nasty with me was her and the one who could be or should be fired should be her because she's clearly not equipped to deal with the public. She doesn't find any kind of pleasure at all at dealing with any of us. She was just drier than a desert. And you know someone lacks passion when you feel that about their vibe. And that's so fucking sad. But just because that's your life situation, that's your misery, it doesn't mean that I have to suffer the consequences when I encounter you in the wild. This is not exactly a wild place this was a federal building see what i mean so anyways you guys that's the type of thing that makes me say i don't care how i dress i don't care how my hair looks i don't care about how my face is presented and i particularly don't care about my position in life regarding my profession there are people out here with more respected positions than mine but y'all sound and look and act like you were picked up from the streets and you're like on a completely feral state calm the fuck down that's all you have to do stay calm